guys, Urban Suburban here. Hope everyone's doing well. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, this is going to be my loadout for a upcoming two-nighter, uh, starting actually tomorrow morning. Uh, my buddy, uh, Ukrainian Prepper, from the Hot Tent video earlier this spring, and I are planning on doing about a 40 to 42k loop in the southwest portion of the province, starting tomorrow, as I said. And uh, so in this video, I just want to go over uh, my loadout, loadout, what I'm planning on bringing on this trip. Uh, like I said, it'll be two nights, um, two and a half days. We're leaving tomorrow. We had hoped to be on the trail at about uh, by 8 a.m. because tomorrow is our longest mileage day. Uh, but due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, we probably won't be hitting the trail till 11-ish. So a little later than planned. We got about uh, 20k to do tomorrow, about 13 miles, give or take. Uh, so it'll be a long day. Uh, but we're really looking forward to it. It is a trail that neither of us have ever been on. Um, I've been to that part of the province a fair amount. I used to hunt down there, um, but not exactly where this trail is. Uh, it should be really interesting. There's actually a desert, <laughs> if you can believe that, in Manitoba. There is some uh, a small desert. I don't know if this trail goes right through it or skirts around it, but I expect uh, some sandy sections. Uh, it follows a creek system and a river, um, so there's going to be bush, there's going to be coniferous forest, probably deciduous, and since it rained like crazy today and a little bit earlier this week, I'm expecting a lot of mosquitoes, and I hear the ticks are really bad too, so um, we've done all we can to sort of mitigate the, those problems, which I will go over uh, what we've done for that as well. But uh, let's get right into this, try and make this a shorter video. And I'll show you uh, the packs I'm using. I'm going to be doing a two-pack system. And uh, I'll show you what's in them. So stand by, guys. Okay, guys. So the first pack in my two-pack system, of course, is my ribs front pack. Nothing new here. Nothing new here. You guys have all seen these before, I'm sure. If not on my channel, then on dozens of other, other channels. Uh, just a great, great bag to uh, expand your capability and make things really uh, easy access for you which is what's going in here basically this is going to be my camera bag and uh, snacks and a few things that uh, you need throughout the day uh, fairly regularly so i'll go into that real quick on this side here i have uh, a whistle and then i got a number of night eyes gear ties which i'll show you what uh, a couple of these i know exactly what i'm doing with and a couple are just spares for you never know for what they don't weigh anything and then this is kind of, this side's also my main camera bag. I also got a bunch of cough drops in here. I'm kind of fighting a cold that the kids brought home from school. So got some uh, vitamin C drops and some Ricola cough drops here for sucking on while I'm walking. I'm going to be going strictly with the GoPro on this uh, trip just to save weight and save hassle and uh, just see how it works out. I got a few new things for it. So I got the GoPro Hero 3 Plus, I think silver edition. I've had this for about a year and a half now. Uh, and on here right now, I just have the uh, skeleton frame and a uh, polarizing lens on there with a cover. Uh, I will also be bringing the uh, waterproof, the full waterproof casing just in case it rains. We're not expecting any rain, but you never know. Or if we're goofing around a creek or something like that, just in case. I uh, got one of the uh, Gorilla Pods, tripods for it, and then today I picked up this Polar Pro external camera, multi-camera, <laughs> microphone. And uh, so we'll see how that does. I know GoPro with the skeleton housing, often in the wind, the sound can be terrible, it just picks up too much wind. So we'll see how this works. It actually comes with a windscreen, it says it's rated up to 45 miles per hour, not expecting any winds anywhere near that, so uh, we'll give that a try. And of course, a bunch of spare batteries, uh, spare SD card or micro SD, that sort of stuff. Your typical GoPro stuff. And I'll also be bringing a head mount for it. This side, the front pocket, I have uh, sunblock, bug dope, lots of bug dope, Purell, uh, lip balm, SPF rated lip balm. map of the area we're going to, uh, my neck knife, the Enzo Necker of course, and 
some of the stuff will actually just be going in my pockets. One of my lights that I'm bringing with, this is the old light uh, i3s. Great little light, also, uh, which is really nice. It can be used as a headlamp with uh, if you got to build baseball cap. Leatherman Juice S2, that's going to be my multi tool for this trip. Very minimalistic fire kit, and here I got uh, a couple of those waxed fire discs, uh, some jute twine, and a small Bic lighter. Spare batteries. Uh, I have a couple double A's and a couple triple A's because unfortunately not all my stuff takes the same but that'll cover all my lights as well as my GPS and lastly this is the true flare flare gun uh, it's a sweet little unit my wife actually got me a couple years ago for hunting and it's basically a pen gun but it'll shoot off uh, either a flare and they actually work really well. I've tested these out. Or the small ones are uh, bear bangers. And we will definitely be in bear country. Anyway guys, that's what I got in my ribs front pack. Um, I will be moving uh, some of the snacks from my food bag and stuff into this too as well for uh, ease of access on the trail. Uh, but for now, that's the main stuff that's in there. So now let's get to the main bag. Okay guys, so this is my main pack for this trip. This is a brand new pack for me. This is the Osprey Volt 60. It's a 60 liter pack. Um, I have not bought a true hiking backpack in probably almost 25 years. Uh, the last one that I purchased, which is one of the first that I ever purchased, I was still maybe even in junior high when I got that, if not for sure high school, if not junior high, uh, was the pack that you saw in my winter hot tenting video, which was a Jack Wolfskin Serac 2, which literally predates the internet. You can scour online and find almost nothing on that online on that pack. Uh, I know it's a 70 plus 10 liter, it's a huge pack, and I know it's absolutely awesome. It is bomb proof, um, but it is heavy because it's 25 years old. It's old technology, old materials, super heavy duty, super well made but really heavy, like you're talking six, seven pounds, I think. But it'll last forever. Um, but I want something a little smaller. I don't need 70 plus liters for two or three days. Um, really, I don't even need 60 liters, but uh, I grabbed a 60 because, uh, well, it was on sale and, uh, and I tried it on and it fit well and I really liked it. Anyway, I'll do a separate video with a full review of this after the trip because so far I've only worn it around the house and around the yard a little bit uh, loaded up. So I want to get a few miles on before I do a review, but so far I really like it, really comfortable. 60 liters, uh, this is what it looks like. This is fully packed all right now with my food, my water, fuel, everything's in here that's going with me. Uh, so let's dig into this thing. I'll show you exactly what I'm taking. Okay guys, so just getting into the uh, top compartment of the path here. First aid kit, this is the Adventure Medical Kits, uh, Medical Kit 0.5. But of course, uh, there isn't a whole lot of the original stuff in there. This is packed out much fuller uh, than what it has been. And I particularly packed a lot of stuff for blister treatment or prevention. Because I have uh, some newer boots that I'll be using as well. Uh, that I've been wearing for about a month now. Uh, they've been great for day-to-day -day wear. But I haven't put 20 miles or 20 kilometers in a day on them yet. So you never know. So lots of uh, blister band-aids, moleskin, stuff like that in here. As well as your typical... Uh, medications and bandages and all that kind of stuff. This is just a really small, uh, basically my repair kit. Uh, I have stuff basically for repairing any terrace of the nylon in the tent, the pack. Uh, there's a repair kit for my sleeping pad and then a diamond rod for a knife in here. This is my basically toiletries bag. Of course you got toothbrush, toothpaste, toilet paper, baby wipes, um, I have a very small face cloth in there, that kind of stuff. You know, the stuff that you kind of need. My headlamp. This uh, is probably about as old as my uh, last pack, probably over 20 years old. It's a black diamond. I have no idea what the model is. As you can see, it's a three AAA pack on the back, four LEDs in the front here. And. <laughs> As you can see, I've been having issues with it, so this will be its last trip. Uh, you kind of have to screw with the batteries in the back here, there must be a loose wire. 
so hopefully I'll get this working. Um, if not, I have some backups, but uh, I just didn't have it died this morning on me, and I didn't have time to go pick up a new one. So uh, hopefully I'll get this working. Use this. If not, uh, I have some uh, redundancy stuff. But like I said, this will be the last trip this makes, and it'll be time for a new headlamp. Uh, head net for mosquitoes because they could be really brutal out there or could be none at all, we'll see. Uh, some Nomex gloves just for working around the fire, wood processing or if it's cold at night. Tomorrow night it's supposed to go down to about the low is minus 3 Celsius. That's pretty cold um, so I may be wearing these in the evening. Uh, my water filtration kit, this is the uh, Sawyer, the full size Sawyer filter. Uh, I have uh, enough aqua tabs in here for 10 liters as well and then I have a 1 liter platypus uh, softy bottle in here to replacing the Sawyer bags. So I can use that uh, to filter, uh, fill it with the dirty water, filter it into my water bottles, fill it up again and then throw an aqua tab in there and purify uh, another liter uh, while I have the drink out of the bottles. And the last thing in here I got clipped in so I don't lose is my little Coglin's mini lantern. I love this thing. So that's another source of light that can hang in my tent. Strobe mode. And uh, $6 guys, I can't recommend it enough. Puts out plenty of light uh, to hang in a hammock or in a one or two man tent. They are fantastic. So that completes the lid of the pack. Okay guys, in the outside pockets, I'm just bringing two 500 milliliter water bottles, cheapy water bottles. I can crush them down if I want. Uh, the Sawyer filter also fits on these bottles, so I could filter out these bottles if I wanted. But so I'll have uh, these two for my water, plus the one liter platypus. In the front pouch in the bag, for now, I have uh, this will be my main tool that I'm bringing with. This is the SOG. Northwest Ranger. I've done a video, probably a couple videos on this knife. I've hooked up my um, Baldrick sling to it, as you can see. I've also made some modifications to the sheath. As you can see, I wrapped uh, some of the uh, shock cord here to keep the ferrous seam rod on. I also put a uh, shock cord retainer on here because, as I mentioned in the video for this sheath, this uh, Cleveland Kydex sheath, I wasn't super happy with the retention. so. That just makes sure it doesn't fall out no matter what. So in the front pocket there's that, and then the fuel from alcohol stove. Now I have enough fuel in there for probably eight or nine burns, which will be probably more than I need, uh, but just in case. Now into the pack itself. Inside the top of the lid, can't forget this stuff. Some good Irish whiskey. Top in here is my food bag. I also brought a lot of food. A lot of food. Um, I won't rip this open, but uh, basically oatmeal for breakfast. I got a couple Mountain House, uh, actually not a Mountain House, but Mountain House style meals for suppers and some for lunches. Uh, some dehydrated chili that I made myself and all kinds of other goodies. And as I pull them out on the trail, I'll let you guys know what we're manging on. Next up, my little camp pillow. Love this thing. Uh, it doesn't pack down the smallest pillow that I've seen, but it's pretty small and uh, it's, it's comfortable. My cook kit. I really spent a lot of time kind of cannibalizing all my cook kits to get one down to the smallest, lightest, and most capable that I could. So I'll go through it real quick now for you since you guys probably, well I know you haven't seen this because I just put it together like this, but you've seen all these components. So I got my uh, Optimus folding uh, long spoon, titanium, and that's of course for the uh, bagged freeze dried meals that I'll be using. A new cozy, new a, uh, what do you call this, a Reflectex cozy for my pot, and this of course is my uh, Snow Peak solo stove, solo stove. Snow Peak Solo uh, Kit Pot in here. There we go. 700 milliliter pot, so I can cook uh, 
two cups of water in there easily at a time, boil. Take that off. I got uh, two esmid tabs in there, or cubes, just in case. Inside that, here I have a GSI camp mug with a cozy. Uh, it actually had a nylon handle here, but I cut it off so that it would fit in the pot nicely. Um, about 400 ml cup, so that'll be for my uh, coffees, my teas, hot chocolate. I could even put my soup in there. So really, I'll, I'll have two insulated containers. Inside that is my Evernew titanium stove. A little measuring cup in here for uh, it doesn't want to come out. A little measuring cup for the alcohol. There's the alcohol stove, titanium, and then windscreen and base. So I can actually I can use this for the uh, esmid tabs as well as wood, which I'm planning on using wood as much as I can, which will probably only be in the evenings when we are at camp. Uh, lunches, uh, maybe breakfast too. Lunches, I'll for sure uh, be using alcohol just to make it speedier on the trail. So well, there's that. And then in the bottom of the pot here, there's also a lid for the cup. And inside there, a little piece of old camp towel that's super absorbent stuff just for uh, washing the pots and cups. And that's that. That is the new cook kit for my uh, lightweight backpacking. Here I have my sleeping pad. This is the Climax Static V that you guys saw in my hot tenting video. This is an uninsulated pad, so that's why it packs down really small. When you inflate it, it's about three and a half inches thick, so it is super comfortable. But rated, the R value is only about 1, 1 1.1, so not much for insulation. And like I said, tomorrow night, it's going down. The low is below freezing, so uh, that could be a little interesting. Um, we'll see how that goes. Because my pad is not insulated, to go under it, I'm bringing... SOL one man heat sheet, reflective uh, emergency blanket to put underneath this uh, to reflect my body heat back, hopefully, in theory. We'll see how that goes. As well, I always bring my uh, Reflectex sheet with me here uh, that I use mainly as a seat for kneeling on, that sort of thing. But I will also, at night, be unfolding this and putting this under my pad, sort of centered on my torso to keep my upper body. Uh, a little extra warm. Just a rain cover for my pack, which hopefully we won't need, but you just never know around here. Columbia rain jacket, uh, not the smallest or lightest, but uh, not too bad. This is all my spare clothing. Uh, of course, I got, uh, I can't wear socks two days in a row, or gitch for that matter. So I got uh, extra socks, extra gitch. Um, in here I have a pair of polyester long underwear bottoms uh, for sleeping in. Uh, an extra pair of really thick merino wool socks for sleeping in. Um, a fleece beanie, probably for sleeping in and in the mornings. I also have my um, really lightweight uh, LL Bean Primo Loft jacket stuffed in here, uh, an extra, I think an Under Armour t-shirt, and there might be something else in there too. Oh, a uh, Merino buff, um, in case it uh, really gets, oh, and a uh, polyester long sleeve uh, quarter zip shirt as well. So quite a bit of extra clothes, uh, more than I'll probably need, but layers for uh, if it gets really cold, especially at night. This is just uh, stakes for my tent. Yes, I said tent. Uh, some extra cordage and being uh, 550 as well as uh, probably about uh, 50 feet of jute twine. And yes, a tent. This was about the best I could find. Uh, short notice without having to order something online because I had no time for shipping. This is the North Face Stormbreak 1. This is a one-man tent. It literally feels like you're in a coffin when you're in there. If you're any bigger than me, it would be a really tight squeeze. I am just under six feet and just under 200 pounds, and there is not a whole lot of extra room. I think I will be able to get my boots inside. 
Um, my spare clothes inside, there's a small vestibule on the door side. Um, I should be able to get my pack under there. Um, so it's going to be big enough as far as I can tell. I set it up at home, I put my pad in there, make sure my pa pad wasn't too wide. Because um, I read that if you have an extra wide pad, it's not going to fit. Luckily mine, uh, mine's okay. Mine's about 25 inches and this is about 28 inches wide uh, at the feet. A little, about 34 uh, at the shoulders. So it's tapered. Um, but I really like it and it's really light. Um, especially for what you pay. This was $160. Uh, so pretty good for a one man tent and three and a half pounds. Uh, and that three and a half was with the stakes that came with, which were steel stakes. They were super heavy. So I switched them out for, uh, I had aluminum stakes for the hammock. And uh, I didn't re bother reweighing it, but uh, it says trail weight on this. Um, you're looking, I think it was two and three quarter pounds. So for 160 bucks, uh, full coverage fly, uh, aluminum poles, vestibule, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see how it performs and I'll let you guys know. I will do a full review video on this as well after the trip sometime. Uh, I also have in here actually, I cut a Typar ground uh, or a footprint for this. Um, no one locally had the North Face footprint for this and it's a really, obviously since it's so light, thin material, I forget what the base is, uh, 210 T nylon maybe, uh, very thin. And I just didn't want to have it straight on the ground. I don't know what the ground is going to be like exactly there. So I just uh, sucked it up, probably added an extra half pound, but whatever. You know, if it'll protect my investment, it's worth it. That's it for the main uh, portion of the pack here. This pack does have down here a sleeping bag compartment. Uh, you can remove the divider and have it open all the way if you want. I have it in there right now. But in there, of course, is my sleeping bag, or I should say blanket. This is what I use when I hammock camp, and this is what I'll be taking with me as well. Uh, this is just the Sea to Summit compression bag. In there is my Thermarest. I believe it's the Regulus blanket. It's a synthetic uh, 4 degree blanket, or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius. So this is rated to plus 4. It's The low is minus 3 uninsulated ground pad it's gonna be touch and go but it's a lot warmer the next night so it's just one night um, I got a lot of clothes I can layer up in I got a toque I got a buff for my neck that I can pull all the way up uh, I got plenty of shirts pants to sleep in wool socks I'm not too worried but we'll see and that oh. Other than, right now, one of the hip pockets, I have my GPS. This is the Oregon 450T. Uh, it's a couple years old already. There's a lot newer technology out there, but it serves me well. For the last few years, I really like it. And that's it for the pack. Uh, I will be playing with my food, obviously, uh, tonight yet still, as well as probably on the trail a little bit. Um, putting stuff in the ribs and probably in the hip belts of that pack there just so easier access so I can snack while we're walking. But that's it. That's the main stuff that I'm carrying with me. I'm just going to get this out of the way and I'll show you what I'll be carrying on my body as we're hiking. Okay guys, we'll start at the inside and work our way out. I'll just have a few pairs of uh, totally synthetic uh, boxer briefs. Uh, no cotton for this guy while we're hiking. Uh, I got a few pairs of these Merino uh, Merrill socks. All quarter or half length shorty socks, cotton bandana for my pocket, uh, my main t-shirt is just this North Face uh, synthetic shirt, t-shirt. I picked up a new belt for hiking, well not just for hiking but I uh, want something uh, all nylon, all my other belts are all leather. Um, so this is just a Cabela's, uh, made by Bison Industries I believe, it's basically a rigger's belt, uh, not climbing rated of course, but of course all nylon webbing, super lightweight aluminum buckle, this thing weighs almost nothing, really comfortable, it's working really well for me for so far. Uh, this is that uh, quarter zip I was talking about, long sleeve quarter zip, this is a cloud veil I believe, uh, this is 100% polyester, maybe polyester and some spandex in there or something like that. Um, but long sleeve quarter zip give me a little extra coverage 
if it's a little cool in the morning or I may even sleep in this this bad boy. My pants, just a pair of North Face, uh, these are zip-offs. I'm not really anticipating that's going to be warm enough, except for maybe Sunday, to wear these as shorts, but uh, you never know, that way I only need one pair. So this is really the only pair of pants I'm bringing other than the uh, long underwear, but just uh, again, full synthetic, so they'll dry quick if I get them wet. Um, really lightweight. And a sort of lightweight, maybe midweight uh, North Face fleece, again a quarter zip. Again, this will be good in the mornings, in the evenings, and uh, possibly to sleep in. So that's it for my clothes, guys. Uh, a few more things. Last item, guys, trekking poles. This will be my first hike ever with trekking poles. I got picked these up off of uh, MassDrop.com. Not long ago, really good deal, $35. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about trekking poles, but these seem pretty light. Uh, Kelty, that's a pretty well-known name. I can't recall what um, model they are right now. I'll have to annotate that for you guys. But they are a Kelty, of course, as you can tell, they are telescoping, telescopic. Um, and I've done a little rigging on them so that I can use them with the GoPro, both as a monopod, uh, as a selfie stick, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to do a full separate video on that because that'll take a little while to explain all that. But uh, trekking poles, that's kind of the last thing. Okay guys, I lied. One last thing. Of course the footwear, probably the most important thing on a hike. Uh, like I said, I've only had these for about a month. These are the Keen Marshall Mids. Uh, so far I am really, really happy with them. Like I said, I've just been wearing them throughout the day at work and that sort of thing. So all day. Um, but definitely haven't put uh, 20k in a day on them yet, so we'll see. But they are really lightweight, which is why I got them. They're not like a mountaineering boot or anything like that, which is not what I need for this trail. Really lightweight, but you'll see it still fairly stiff. Um, breathable, waterproof. Um, so far they've been great. I've had them out in little showers, walking through wet grass. No issues there yet. Um, I have an issue, my feet tend to get really hot uh, in anything, uh, but these have kept my feet about as dry as anything I've ever owned, so can't complain, but again, I'll let you guys know as the uh, miles go on. And uh, if they turn out well, I'll do a few full review of these as well after the long hike. Okay guys, so that's basically everything that I'm bringing with me. Uh, it's quite a bit of stuff for three days, two nights, I realize that, 40k. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, my base weight uh, of the pack was about 21 pounds, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not a huge weight guy, I don't count every ounce. Uh, I am trying to cut stuff down. Uh, I know back in the day, for a two, three nighter, I'd have 45 pounds, but uh, technology's changed and uh, my desire to carry the amount of weight has changed as well, which is the main driving factor on trying to cut back. But like I said, my base weight was about 21, 21-ish pounds. Uh, now fully loaded, uh, adding the fuel for the stove, all my food, the water, um, everything, booze. Uh, I was looking 29 pounds, I believe. Uh, I may be able to cut one or two things out and drop a half pound, but uh, I don't really think it's worth it. Uh, if I was doing 200 miles, then maybe I'd be a little more worried about uh, dropping another couple pounds, or if there's going to be a lot of elevation changes, stuff like that. But for this, should should for the most part be a fairly uh, level, um, easy going hike. A uh, fair amount of miles the first day, but uh, they should be fairly easy miles. Really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to film as much as I can to show you guys after. Of course, that'll probably take me a few weeks to get it all out, but. Uh, can't wait for it. I'm really excited. This is going to be my first uh, trip of this length in a, in a number of years, actually. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I uh, have nothing but high hopes and uh, high expectations, and I will let you guys know how it goes. Anyway, guys, take care. We'll talk to you soon.